The seed of the project for the creation of the Satya Sai School was a group of three people that in 1982 started to offer EHV training to schools in Thailand. In seven years, 10,000 teachers were trained in the whole country, but even so the group felt something was missing. That is when they decided to create a school that would serve as a model for the Education in Human Values program. The Satya Sai School was created in 1992 and started with 14 students in the first grade. Today there are 150 students and in 1999 the second grade will begin. In order to accommodate this, new classrooms are already being prepared. The school operates as a boarding school and is non-profit making. The land upon which it stands was donated by Mr. Ramlal Suchdev. The teachers also live in the school, which has an infrastructure prepared to attend to their needs, as we were told by Dr. Terakiati. Uh, you know, Satya Sai Baba often says, first be and then do and then tell. So we thought we were at the stage, looking back, now we thought we were at the stage of doing. Uh, we, so a few of us got together with uh, a lot of help from various people who believe in such a size uh, philosophy of education. They all uh, joined in and we then uh, started to look for a piece of land. We follow strictly what Sri Satya Sai Baba has said, that we must not go and collect money. What we do is we announce the project, and people who believe in the project, uh, then they came forward. Uh, for instance, if we thought that the students here should be able to swim because we are next to the river. So we announced that we need a swimming pool to teach them how to swim. And when we announced the project, many people came forward and said, we want to help with this. Uh, a person actually came and said, I'm going to donate part of my salary uh, to, to contribute to the swimming pool. Uh, like this, everything in this school happens in this way. So no one can claim ownership of the school, although by name, the school belongs to the Satya Sai Foundation. By name, we know that we were inspired by Sri Satya Sai's teachings, but uh, this is, I would call, the labor of love. The parents recognize the dedication of the teachers and the administrators. Only uh, commitment can make them su succeed in what they're trying to do. Commitment is, a, is like a willpower. It's not money because mo the management who are here, they are not doing it for money. They're doing it from their heart. If I used to say to teacher Lolan, if you do it because of the money, you will not success. The day starts in the auditorium for ecumenical prayer, where each student prays according to his religion and learns to respect all the faiths and beliefs. First year in, in particular, the school was regarded with a lot of suspicion by people around here. It has a strange name. It has some Islam children, and it has this funny foreign teacher. So people were wondering, what is this school? It's got an Indian name, we have some Islam children, and we have foreign teachers. So what are they teaching? Are they teaching Indian religion? Are they teaching Islam? Are they teaching Christianity? So people were curious. And the mother of this child told me that many teachers sit on her bus going to work and would often, when they passed the school, they would discuss the school. Well, it so happened it was the holidays, for us anyway. And the little boy was on the bus with his parents. His name is Op. And the teachers saw him, and they immediately went to him, and they said, oh, oh, 
they didn't call him by his name, but they, they asked him, they said, you go to that school, don't you? And he said, yes, I do. And they, they said, what is it like? He said, it's very good, I love it. And then they went straight to the point. They said, what religion do they teach you in that school? And at this point, Op was seven years old. And without batting an eyelid, he just looked at the teachers and he said, at my school, all my teachers teach me to respect and love all religions. So I respect and love all religions, but I am a Buddhist. Three Buddhist monks on a visit to the school considered this to be one of the more positive points of the EHV program. As a Buddhist spiritual leader, I consider the school to be sufficiently open. It accepts students of all religions. In truth, Buddha himself accepted all. Just wished that they should approach, experiment and judge for themselves. If you are a Buddhist, you can learn from a Muslim. The difference is not important. Even the teachers don't have to be devotees of Satya Sai Baba in order to teach in the school. There is only one rule for them, which is the duty of always giving a good example. In education and human values, it is fundamental to believe and act according to what is taught. Here we don't advertise such a side, but at the same time we don't conceal. We open with them if they ask, but we say, you study. We have material for you, you study our lives, you study his teachings. This is a philosophy, all is from him, not from us. And then slowly they get inspired. If we have time, we talk about Swami's life and teachings. And, and slowly they change. After prayers, the students sing. time for breakfast. The children pray before all the meals. Also, it is time to learn human values. When two children quarrel, the only punishment they receive is to be nice to each other for three days. After breakfast, the children wash up the dishes and tidy the cafeteria. Then school starts. During classes, the teachers use the five fundamental techniques of the Education in Human Values program. The first is to sit in silence, to develop concentration, memory and intuition. Another technique is the use of citations and reflection upon a given theme using the phrase of the day. Today, the one with the candle when the music stops 
will tell us where to find peace.